Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, we are going to use both direct cut and scan to cut data to cut out stamped images. You are going to get to see the advantages and limitations of each. I'm working on my Valentine's projects. I used both direct cut and scan to cut data and I used these two stamp sets, Heartfelt and Under My Umbrella along with some of our designer series paper, which I'll get to later. So now, we are going to start with the scanning in your brother's Scan and Cut. Everything I'm about to show you can be done on any model of Scan and Cut. Later, when I talk about layering, I will explain which models you can and can't use for that. So this is, a, this is my favorite Valentine stamp. And when I say that favorite, I mean I probably have 20, stamps that say Happy Valentine's Day, but I really, really love this one. It's on the Heartfelt Stamp Set, and here's why. I like how when you stamp, and I used real red ink, I like how the, the script font is really crisp in the inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use direct cut to cut these out. Now you might be saying, I have heart punches, and so do I, and I love punches, and I've talked about why I love punches on my Facebook recently with the new Please Just Punch paper. But check this out. We have, I have this heart punch, and this is kind of how I got this idea. When I punched out one of these hearts, it came out great, but it put an outline distance, which I like. But I thought, wouldn't that be fun to just directly cut out the heart? Then I can punch out another layer using this heart punch. And I even have another heart punch to cut out one more layer. So that was the limitation of my punch. The limitation of the punch is that it's a fixed size. But when you use your scan and cut, you can do all kinds of things and all kinds of layering. So let's just use direct cut and cut out the hearts. I of course have lots of samples to show you to make this more relevant. So we're going to start with, you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. We're gonna select scan. Now, when you wanna directly cut out something like these hearts, you're gonna use direct cut. I'll explain why you would use this next one. The, when you directly cut out something, you can do several things. You can cut out the shape along the line. You can cut outline distances around it to make it layered. You can create extra offsets, okay? And I've done this in, in my channel where you take sentiments and you can layer the sentiments, okay? So you would put offsets to make different layers. It adds dimension to your project. So that's direct cut. When you use direct cut, you're not storing anything. You're just temp temporarily storing something. So it's asking, where do you want to store this information? So just the information you're converting. I always select to my machine and I'm going to select 12 by six recognition area or the scan area and black and white recognition mode. What does that mean? If you have an SDX model, you can go between a 12 by 12 or 12 by six. Since I'm only, since I'm only showing you two images that I got from the heartfelt stamp set, then I'm just, I'm just going to be able to save time by putting them in the top part of the mat. Okay, so I just need 12 by 6. Because there's good contrast between the hearts and the background, I can use black and white recognition mode even though I stamp them in real red. Okay, let's get started. Let's start and it's going to scan in these hearts. I really just needed one to show you, but I like to cut out. I like to stamp an extra one in case I have any trouble. <laughs> then I have an, a backup stamped image for you. But actually I would be cutting out maybe 20 at a time or so. I like to cut out a lot at once because I'm making Valentine treats, which I'll show you. Okay, now next thing you wanna do when you're directly cutting something is select the area. There's, because the reason this is all clean down here is it didn't scan this. This is the dirty part is showing my mat that it scanned. So let's just say we don't wanna, we don't wanna mess with all this dirt over there because it's too much confusion for the scan and cut. You wanna frame just the parts that are nice, but you also have, even when you're trying to frame, you also might have little extra bits over on the sides. So depending on how clean your mat is, I'm gonna say ignore object size. Now the heart is probably about two inches or at least, I know it's more than one, maybe less than two. So if we say ignore, let's say 1.3, we're not gonna ignore the heart itself. We're just gonna ignore all those little bits around the back of the heart. So let's say, okay. And then now it should just select the two hearts. 
Okay, so now let's just talk about direct cut for one more moment because it's the last time I'm going to use it in this tutorial. I am going to directly cut out these hearts. Okay, I'm directly cutting them out along the line. If you want to put an outline distance like my punch does, okay, like this, like my, I'm, only, I'm only just going to, I'm not going to do it because my punch does it. So why would I do it here? So if you want to do an outline distance like the punch is doing, then go in here to the outline distance and make a white area around your heart. And you'll have the cutest little treats because I'm going to show you that. So if you didn't buy the punches, you can still get cute little treats with a little outline around your hearts. And it looks beautiful. And I'll show you the treats with and without an outline. But because I'm just doing layering, I'm going to use both my heart punches and layer these. I am not putting an outline distance. I'm going to cut directly along the line of my heart. Okay, and I'm going to just say OK and select cut. Okay, so you can do this with any model of scan and cut. They all scan, they all cut ever since the beginning. That's what sets the scan and cut apart from other die cutting machines is that it scans in and cuts what you see. Other ones do other things like print and cut, but this one does scan and cut. You don't even need a computer. Right now my wireless isn't even hooked up on this. I'm just doing this all right from the machine itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the mat so I can show you what, what it did. Okay, here's my mat. And here's my, this was Whisper White cardstock, by the way. Look how great that is, it cut along the lines. So now, I'll show you how I remove that in a second, but I wanted to mention the blade. So because I'm using an SDX model of machine, I don't need to set the blade depth. There, there are no blade depths, it's all automatic. Okay, if you are using the CM350 or maybe CM300 or any of those CM series where you have to set your blade depth, then you, you would set a blade depth for, for Whisper White of a blade depth of four. Okay, I'm just showing you how I remove these beautiful hearts. Okay, if you're not getting, if you're getting like white space around one side and not on the other, then you need to do what's called scanning, cutting, position, adjustment. It means your machine's not aligned. My machine's aligned pretty well. Okay, pretty well. I get a little tiny bit of white on the bottom, but it's aligned pretty well. And I'm gonna show you what I would do because I'm always trying to add tips and tricks to my videos. What I would do to get rid of that, and if you, this is if you have a, you know, say you have a real red ink pad like I do, or a stampin' spot from maybe one of your paper pumpkin kits, or you have a marker, which I happen to have, I would take, if there is a little bit of white, now I'm not talking about, if it's misaligned, then you need to do scanning, cutting, position, adjustment. But in my case, it's just a tiny little bit of white I see, and I would just take a marker and fix that. Okay, that's it, because it's, it's no, no sense aligning it again. It's pretty nice already. I mean, that's the best I'm gonna get it. I've already aligned it three times, and that's, that's like the best I'm gonna get. So maybe just draw around it with a marker a little bit, get rid of any little bit of white, but I think it came out beautiful. So now, not showing you those examples yet of, of what I did with this direct cut, but I will be showing you at the end, only because of how I have to set up my table when I move the machine. Okay, now. So we, we have direct cut, we can go back, let me, let me just go back, we can go back, we could add an outline distance, you know, like this, switch the paper out and make cute little, cute little outlines for your hearts. And you can even add shapes behind them. Okay, so now let's go back home, let's delete this. There is something called scan to cut data. So scan to cut data is something you use when you want to save what you are scanning in. So let's just go to scan. You have direct cut, we can't save it. You can't save what you did, but in the direct cut, you can add layers. In any model, you can add outline distances and nice things. Now, we are going to use, I'm gonna use a different stamp set now. I had this idea, so I thought, why not use my scan and cut to, to fill in the umbrellas with a cute little pattern of paper? Okay, so I have to kind of explain this big picture before I start into the tutorial. So the big picture is, let me, let me get this. Here's the stamp set, it's under my umbrella. And I'm doing these for Valentine's Day, but of course, showered with love, I'm gonna show you some party favors. Even though I'm giving out, where's the shower with love? There it is, shower with love. I'm giving them out for Valentine's Day, but you can use shower with love for party favors. And you can put the theme of your party, like I'm putting hearts inside this umbrella, okay? So uh, let, me, let me explain the big picture 
because you might just be saying, papered chef, <laughs> why if you have punches, which I do, I have, I have the umbrella builder punch, wouldn't you just punch out the pattern paper? Okay, so why wouldn't you just punch out the pattern paper of this umbrella? Well, because it would, if I did, let me just, I have to show you this because this is all part of the big picture. And I tried that and, and trust me, I tried it because that was my first idea. Let me put little hearts inside my umbrella. And I went like this, okay. I went like that with the punch and there was a white outline distance around it. And so the hearts didn't truly stay inside the umbrella. Okay, they came outside the umbrella, which is cute. It still was really cute. Okay, but then I got the idea, well, wait a minute. I could, I could use scan to cut data and I could take, I could take one umbrella, okay? One, we're gonna scan in one umbrella and I'm gonna be able to cut out loads, loads and loads and loads of little umbrella hearts. And I won't have a white outline distance around them. They're gonna be the exact size of this. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's go, let's put this down. Putting the mat down again. I'm just adhering my umbrella to the mat. Okay, so what you could do with scan to cut data, as you might have just guessed it, that you can't do a direct cut, I'm gonna go ahead and load the mat as I'm talking, is that you can make multiples of something. I've shown this on my channel, I've shown this in my courses, but hey, I have not shown it with the little hearts and the umbrella, so this is a new application of what you may have learned before. Okay, so now we're done with direct cut. Direct cut, you can't save what you're doing. Scan to cut data, you can, save, you can save the image and do things to it. So let's use scan to cut data. Again, this is a review, black and white recognition mode, six by, 12 by six scanning area. Okay, you only need to scan one umbrella. You're not cutting it out, you're saving the umbrella. You're saving the shape, one shape. You're saving the outline of the umbrella. So it recognizes, it takes longer, a little bit longer than a direct cut to recognize. And the reason for that is because it's turning it into a cutting file that you can then retrieve. So I hope your wheels are spinning with all kinds of ideas. I use practical examples of what I'm working on, but you can use this for any of the projects you are working on. So you save a shape. It can be a stamped image. It can be a, a pattern from a paper. It can be a die cut that you cut out. I've done this tutorial with many different applications, but bo bottom line is you're saving a shape. So here's my umbrella shape that I wanna save. Again, I need to you know, just select that one little area because I have a lot of dirt on my mat. So there's, when you go to scan to cut data, it's asking, do you want the outside of the, the outside of your, Scanned image, that's what I want, the first option. The second option is, do you want the inside and outside of your stamped image? Or your pattern, in case you have a pattern, paper. Um, this one, I did example of that. I've done many examples of that one, like cutting the inside of a butterfly. We're not using that. And this one is just selecting all the lines, all the lines all over. And they, they turn them into a bunch of uh, like line drawings, like, li I mean, it selects lines that are not even connected. It's kind of a hot mess, this one. I like using the first and second option. So the first option, let's select it. So we have the umbrella, and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. Not zoom in, we're gonna, we're gonna get a selection area. Selection area, and we want just the umbrella. But of course, I'm gonna ignore object size in case any of these little dirty bits got into the back. And even, it's taking a while because it's processing because I selected that area. I can't even select this yet. Don't worry if your machine's not responding as fast as you can think because it, it is a computer processor after all. So just ignoring some small bits. See, and even when I say okay, it took a minute to respond. Say okay again. And by the way, this is line smoothing, which I hardly ever need to use. That That's how to smooth but it, it usually does a great job just of selecting what I scanned in. Okay, so there you say, okay, it processes it. Now, it's asking you where do you wanna save the image? I, I, didn't, I don't have the wireless hooked up right now on this machine. It's not hooked up to my router, so I only have two choices. I can't even use the Canvas workspace because my wireless isn't hooked up yet, but it usually is. But I'm gonna save it to my machine or to a USB stick. 
That's you put the thumb drive in the back of your machine. I'm saving it to the machine. It's a lot easier. In fact, one of the advantages of having a Brothers Can and Cut is I can save like all my projects. I'm already up to over 100. Okay, and it's I can save all my projects. Oh, I guess you're not allowed to do over 100 because it just, ha. <laughs> I'm bragging that I can save over 100, but it probably was like, whoa, you reached your limit. And instead of telling me, it just decided to restart. <laughs> Okay, let's see if it really saved it. So we're gonna see if it really saved it, 101. I'm gonna go retrieve data. So after you've done saving, you've done scan to cut data, you saved it. It said it was number 101, let's try it. So you turn on your machine again, it could be the very moment later, like I'm doing, or it could be days later, you're gonna hit retrieve data. Where do you wanna retrieve it from? Your machine, yes, that's where mine is, crossing fingers. The USB stick, canvas workspace where you saved it wirelessly, or with a USB cable to your, compu to your computer. But no, we want to retrieve it from our machine. This is the way to get down to the bottom quickly. And there's my umbrella, okay? And this is what I'm gonna do, show you how to do with it. So let's, 101, yes, there's my umbrella. So you're saying, uh, Paper Chef, like you just spent all this time you know, saving one darn umbrella and you, you know, and you even have a punch, like what, what gives? All right, so here's why you wanna do this scan to cut data. This is the biggest advantage of using scan to cut data is this. We could just cut it out right now and it would, if I left my paper right on the mat, which I'm not gonna do, let me just take the paper off the mat. If you were to leave it in the exact spot and you retrieved it, you can just go ahead and cut that out. But in that case, why would you have gone through all that work? You could have just used direct cut. If you want to directly cut out one thing, you would never use scan to cut data. Just go ahead and directly cut it out. But if you want to make multiples of this, that's where the magic happens. The magic happens because you're going to make multiples of this. So let's, let's show you some more skills. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to say, okay, now let's go to edit. And we're selecting the umbrella. Now, let's, take, let's see before I put you all through uh, my guessing games that I had to do. Let's do, let's, let's see how many I fit on here. One, two, three, four across. One, two, three, four, what was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 times four is 48. I know 48 of these will fit on the mat because I've already done it. So let's go object edit. But you know, I had to experiment to see how many would fit. Object edit, it's still selected, go to the plus and you're gonna select 48. I know 48 will fit because when I used this paper earlier, 48 fit. And if not, you just keep trying to see how many will fit. I'm just saving you time. Okay, so now you're like, wait a minute, Paper Chef, you have a hot mess here. Okay, sure I do. But, let's grab a piece of designer series paper <laughs> and um, let's see which one we're gonna use. We're gonna use this one. That's going to be our fill. All right, so what we have to do now is we can't cut these right now as they are. We have, we have all this. They're all on top of each other. We have to do, we have to align them, okay? So, and I need to show you the paper to explain something else. I don't just want to cut out umbrellas aligned all over the place. There is, there is a way that the Brother Scan and Cut will align the umbrellas to give you the, to give you the best use of this pattern. And some, some would go like upright and some would go upside down. But we want to make sure... Because I'm doing hearts in my umbrella, I want my hearts to face up. So when I align, when I'm going to show you how to align these uh, all over to, to use the auto align, okay, we want to make sure that our umbrellas are facing, that the hearts are facing up. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the big picture. So let's do this. Let's say okay. Okay, and we have to say okay again. We have to get to the auto align. This, this button here. So it looks like a couple of... Uh, are they one, two, three pentagons or, you know, five little sided figures, a couple little triangles. So this little object here with all the shapes in it is how you are going to auto align everything on your screen. So the, the options are, do you want to, do you want to just do like the best that it can do? Um, do you want them to, to go with, with any old direction? In other words, this first align feature? No, we don't want that. And we don't want them to go you know, upside down, any of them. This one is saying some will go upside down, some will go right side up, and we'll do the best we can do. No, no, no. You want the scan and cut to do the third option of auto align. You want this option because the triangles are all facing upwards. 
You want all your, your little umbrellas to be facing this way because your pattern on your paper. Now, if your pattern doesn't matter which way your pattern's facing, then of course select a different option. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put this in. So this is the heart paper. And um, well, actually, I'm not gonna put it in. I mean, I'm gonna put it in and show you how we do it, but I'll just show you the paper. Okay, we're gonna say okay. And instead of stopping the recording, because you get the idea now, we're gonna say okay. We're gonna select cut. And I would load the paper, I would cut it. We're not gonna do seven minutes. I'm not making my viewers wait seven minutes. I'm not gonna do a editing of my video later. I, I just wanted to suffice it to say that, that they would all cut out. You would remove the mat, you'd cut them all, you remove the mat, and then you would peel them off the mat. But let's show you how to save it. Okay, so that is important. So that's how you do. So scan to cut data. We were able to save the one umbrella. Okay, I'm just reviewing. We were able to retrieve the umbrella. We were able to create multiples of it. We were able to create multiples of it. And then we were gonna, get, we're gonna save it again. We're gonna save it again with the 48 umbrellas. In fact, this particular time I could have actually fit more, but I think I had a different, um, when I did this earlier, I had a different pattern interval set and a pattern interval is the amount of spacing between the umbrellas. So I wasn't able to fit as many, but you could actually go ahead and fit some more along the bottom. All right, so let's just say save. So you've cut out all your umbrellas and now you're gonna save them so you can use this file again. It's asking, do you wanna overwrite? Yes, I wanna overwrite because right now all that's saved is one umbrella. We wanna overwrite this so you can have multiple umbrellas. Or you could have made a new file. You could have kept one file with one umbrella, and but I overwrote the file. So it means the same file with the same name. Okay, so let's, let's explain something else. So, and I also want to show you this paper real quick. This is a blah, 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 let's see. From my heart, specialty designer series paper. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator after all. So if you want any of these projects, they will be linked. Specialty meaning there's lots of little foiling. And this is such a cute paper. And you can order it now by, you'll have it in time for Valentine's Day. And then you'll also be able to create the projects I'm about to show you, Valentine's projects. And you can use these for all kinds of love occasions. I'm showing you the other side because I only have, I don't have full sheets left of any of these except for these, so they're double-sided. So these go with the heart punches. All right, so now, whew, I have to explain something because you're gonna only see this on SDX models. So let's, let's just take one of these, I'm gonna go backwards. So let, I'm all done, I'm all done with the tutorial as far as you've learned how to use uh, direct cut and scan to cut data. There is one more thing you can do, folks, if you have an SDX model of machine. Okay, so if you have a CM model of machine, CM350, CM300, one of the other models of CMs, you can't do what I'm about to show you, okay? But you can do everything up until this point in the video, which is 23 minutes and 13 seconds, okay? You can do everything I just showed you, but you can't do this one extra thing that you can now do with SDX models. So let's... Let's go to, um, let's pick one. Let's just go to edit for a second. We're gonna pick one, put him over here. Just put this little umbrella over here. You can go, you can take your objects now with the SDX models, and now we're in scan to cut data. You can go to object edit, and you can create offsets right now, right here inside of the scan to cut data. You were never able to do that before. The offsets do not quite coincide with the outline distances from the other from the direct cut, but they are the same concept. Whereas, you know, you can you can put little outline dis offset distances and make your see. I'm just making my umbrella way bigger. See how cool that is. So you can now cut out this one with a. You can cut out offset distances in scan to cut data. That's a game changer for me. I love that because I have I'm able to do more now because in the past when I used scan to cut data, I wasn't able to create an offset, and I like that you can. Okay, so but that's that's. That's just an extra little icing on the cake. But everything else that I showed you up until 23 minutes, you can do with the S, with the CM models. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's get the machine out of the way so I can show you my projects. And as you can see, I'm not even done peeling all the umbrellas off the mat yet. I like to show tips and tricks and things like how I how I you know my thought process works and how I how I got here <laughs> to these little projects today. Let me put something, maybe if I don't put something shiny there, 
My camera needs something. Here, there's some hearts that are not very shiny. It needs something down there, some color. Just for my white balance. All right, so where are we? We are, we are at the point where I will compare why I did, why I came up with the idea of using. So if, if I were to just stamp the images like earlier, I have these punches, and I, I could have just used my punches, and you might have heart dies. It's called the heart punch pack. And I was able to just stamp the images and just get this, which is adorable. I'm giving these to a class of students. Okay, I even added a little ribbon. They are adorable just as they are. You can achieve what I'm showing you if you don't have punches. You stamp the image. You, you then add an offset distance or an outline distance in whichever mode I showed you. All right, so, but if you have what, if you can do, if you do the direct cut, like we just did, we made, we made, we direct, directly cut out the hearts. Okay, I hope you're following and not getting lost because I did use punches. I mean, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm gonna use whatever tools I have, whatever tools are at my disposal, and it includes punches and scan and cut. That's just the way it is. All right, so here. So I just cut this out with the brother scan and cut. You saw me, we just, we just cut these. There's two of them, okay? What you can do now that you have direct cut when you cut along the heart is you can make multi-layered hearts. Okay, I just think that these add an extra layer of dimension, which is really cool, you know, that you can, that, that adds something more than just using, you know, say a one layer with the outline distance. Because now you've got 3D, you got 3D hearts. So this is the same paper, it's, that, that's the paper we're using, the uh, Whisper White, and then the next layer is the Specialty, From My Heart, Specialty Designer series paper. Okay, From My Heart, and then I did it, so I punched out that with the punch, but you could have used an outline distance to make a layer. And then I used, the, this feels like frost, it's some Christmas paper I had that has like snowy silver on it, and feels like frost, and I punched that out with this, this one, but you could have added another layer with your scan and cut. I'm just not using my scan and cut for the extra layers because I have punches, why would I? But some people can't punch very easily with their hands, it's kind of hard for them. And then I did a multi-layered heart there, direct cut for the first one, punches for the next layers. Here's one with just black behind it, direct cut for the first layer, and just the punch for the second layer. All right, those are my, what I'm calling my uh, Valentine's treats for the class. So now you're like wondering what about this umbrella project, okay? What were you doing with the umbrella? I'm making Valentine's treats, but I want you to see that you can also use it for showers. So here are my shower projects. Showered with love. And by the way, there'll be a link to all my little supplies I use, including which kind of M&Ms I use, the little bags I use. Uh, I'll break how big my toppers are, which bags I use. Now, you can do this with Skittles. These are Skittles. You could do it with M&Ms or Red Hots. Okay, you can do what I'm showing you with all these little candies. You can make party shower favors. All right, my first favor, this is the umbrella. And I just want to also show you my little Stamparatus tip and trick. So after I got done stamping all those umbrellas, I, I, I thought they kind of need lines, right? You know, I like putting the hearts inside the umbrellas, but I thought they kind of need little lines. So what I did is I used my Stamparatus to take all of these little hearts that I punched out with the umbrella and I put them, I made myself a little template. I used direct cut. There's direct cut again. I cut one out directly. Okay, one umbrella out. I made it my little template. Now I can take out, I can put in all my little papers into this little template. And there is, can you see that? It does stain, by the way. It's when you have a real red, it stains here. I'm getting into the 30 minute mark, so I don't want to be too much longer, but I do want to tap, tap, tap. I put a little bit of real red ink on here. It does work better with a stampin' spot. Let me put down my stamparatus. I'm leaving this set up because I have a lot of umbrellas to make. All right, so then you put down, you, you put a little ink on your stamp and you push down and that's my stamparatus trick. So it's a scan and cut stamparatus trick. Of course, it's a little crooked because I've been shaking around, but that's how I got my little umbrellas to have lines on them. But it, they were coming out pretty good like this, but of course my little template just slipped. See, so that's how I get my lines on them with real red. You don't have to put lines on your umbrellas. They look cute without it. All right, so that's how I did the umbrella. This is just a little party favor container I got from Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. 
Okay, so that would just be something, I'm, I'm giving this to the teacher of the class. She's getting that one. And then here are my party favors, showered with love. I used some, I used the stamp set. Oops, wrong one, stamp, showered with love. The stamp set from, I already don't know what happened. Here it is, under my umbrella. That's where I got the showered with love. So these make great little hot, they make great little Valentine's treats, but they also make great little shower party favors. Oh, here are the rest. Here, here is another one. So I have red hots. So I just wanted to show you, you could do it with any kind of candies that fit in these little bags. So I have red hots, I have the M&Ms, and I have the Skittles. They all match the real red. There's real red in each of these. The M&Ms is like the real red color. Okay. I was able to cut out 40 umbrellas. I'm still working on it. I'm gonna probably do another page of umbrellas to make more treats for teachers. And I was able to um, put a little outline distance around the outside of the umbrella, which you can't do with the punches because like I said in the, in the first place, kind of how I started this video is when, when I use the umbrella builder punch with the umbrella in the first place, before I started this whole idea in my head, then I was able to, I, I had an outline distance around it, but now, I'm able to just use the umbrella builder to make the black parts. The black parts like the handle and this, but then I was able to use a scan and cut to create the inside of these little umbrellas. And I love how they came out. And then here's my favorite one of all. Yay for party favors. This is my favorite party favor. I used a craft box. I used the little craft box that we sell. And I was even gonna tie a ribbon around it, but I don't think it needed a ribbon. I like the way it came out. And I used a, you know, a two inch band. I think I glued the band right onto it, right onto the box. Fill it with treats. Use the, I'm using it for Valentine's Day, but you can use it for, for bridal showers. Thank you for watching. I hope you understand the difference between direct cut and scan to cut data and the benefits of using each and how you would use each on your machine. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef.